We've all had those times where a bus or a car comes just a little bit too close. And a lot of the times, it's because of distractions like these. One person is in critical condition and another in serious condition after the crash. It happened around 4.15 this afternoon. Right now, I'm at the Monroe County Polling Center. All of these voters just marched here from Den Meadow with Liz Watson and Bernie Sanders. And it's all a part of the Get Out the Vote campaign. <laughs> Lack of representation and silencing exists for women like myself on camera, and it exists for even more women off camera. There are about 100,000 bees here today, and the bee corps is here winterizing the hives. Thanks, Sam. It's hot out here even just standing on our patio, and the humidity is only making it worse. And they tell me more action will be taken next week. It's not just miserable for us, but it's also very miserable for our pet. Today I met the 22-year-old who is providing shoes for hundreds of kids in Fort Wayne. He says it was his one wish for his birthday. The Indiana Attorney General is taking action to stop the release of John Myers, a man in prison for murdering an IU student 20 years ago. The sound of silence and the flicker of solidarity. We love you. We don't want you to die. Someone. Whitney Meeks, one of four dozen people at this vigil, knows the opioid crisis from the inside out and knows events like this matter. Even though like, I've uh, gone through recovery and treatment, um, it's important to me uh, because there's still so many people that don't feel that they can come forward or that their voice is heard. Today, Whitney works for Indiana Recovery Alliance, helping other addicts. We have people that still die alone in bathrooms, and that's completely preventable. And on this night, they are reaching out. When you're in that uh, vulnerable population, you feel very isolated. We want to bring everybody out and, and let them know that we love them. Including the ones who lost the battle, remembered by their names and their stories. We remember those who are not allowed to openly grieve because of how people judge the way our loved ones have died. City officials say they don't want to condemn addicts. Everyone knows someone who has experienced uh, substance use disorder or chaotic drug use. This is so important. Drug-related deaths in Monroe County have decreased following their needle exchange program and overdose reversal training, as demonstrated at the vigil using the drug Narcan. The Indiana Recovery Alliance says overcoming the fear of calling 911 in an overdose can be the difference between life and death. There's so many people that um, they don't want to keep using. Um, you know, they'd rather die, but they, there's simply no way out. But there is now, you know, now that we have uh, different programs like this. Thank you for being here. Onward we go. We love you, period. Imagine risking your life daily. I got about four and a half hours of sleep last night, worked for about eight and a half hours, was off for about three, worked another four hours, went home, got some sleep, got up again at 4.15 this morning. Imagine missing out on valuable memories. So tonight what I'm missing is uh, my daughter's cheering in a football game. And imagine not getting a raise in years. Knowing that I have to be completely focused when I'm at work for my own safety and the safety of others. I'm going to work on a daily basis, not knowing if you're going to have a minimum staffing uh, met. Bloomington police say they're underpaid and overworked. It's finally come to a point where it, it has to be resolved. A lot of our families are just kind of sick of hearing and, and, and dealing with this. The Fraternal Order of Police Union has been working with the City Council since July of 2018 to approve a raise in next year's budget. They have offered solutions, but it's been months of discussion and no agreement. We're not asking to be the highest paid agency in the state. We're, we just want to be competitive. The department says it's five officers short of the minimum staffing requirements, and it's far from what is recommended. You can only do more with less for so long, and, and that's kind of, we feel we've, we've gone well beyond the, the point of where we can continue to do more. Uh, at this point, we're just trying to tread water. And the pressure to work overtime, they say, affects their ability to serve and protect. It's hard. It's, it's difficult to make sure you have to plan your life, you know, very um, distinctly to make sure you're, you know, you're taking care of yourself, your sleep, your family, all that stuff. It's busy Saturday or Friday night, we'll have some calls that get pended for over an hour or more. And that's just because we don't have manpower to address those issues. They say they hope increasing their salaries will bring more police applicants in the future. <laughs> Truth and transparency. Yeah. Something investigative journalists are digging up 
everywhere. We think differently, investigative journalists, right? I've spent a career doing it. Um, we dig deeper. Um, we push harder. <laughs> and I think the public wants that. Um, they can trust an investigative journalist. But Arnold Center director and nationally known journalist says there's a dire need for this kind of reporting. We want to fill a gap that is happening not just in Indiana, but across the country. And it's happening right here at the Arnold Center for Investigative Journalism. I think investigative reporting opens doors for so much change that needs to happen. With four graduate student investigative reporters, the center will distribute their stories statewide. And to see what's going on in the community, how to fix it, how to change it, even if it's just like through your words, that could do something, it could do anything. And to headline the center's grand opening, Scott Pelley, Emmy-winning 60 Minutes news correspondent. Some news outlets cannot afford any longer to do the kind of investigative reporting that we all count on as citizens. Stories to count on. And he says, finding the truth worth telling. I often tell students that there is no democracy without journalism. It's just not possible. The American people need reliable information in order to make decisions for themselves and their families and for the country. With hands and fists and signs raised high, yeah! Dunmeadow packed with potential voters. And you right here in Indiana, in the ninth district, can in fact play a monumental role in the future of this country. Senator Bernie Sanders came here to show support for Democrat Liz Watson, who is running for the 9th Congressional District against Republican incumbent Trey Hollingsworth. Now is our time. This is our chance. Today we are going to make history together. Make history with the goal of doubling voter participation in Indiana. So Sanders and Watson led a march to the polls. Right now, I'm at the Monroe County Polling Center. All of these voters just marched here from Den Meadow with Liz Watson and Bernie Sanders. And it's all a part of the Get Out the Vote campaign. The event brought almost 200 voters to Election Central in under one hour to cast their early vote. Voters both in support of Liz Watson and those against. You know, it's not every day that a senator comes to Bloomington. So no matter who it is, I'll probably come. Um, and even if I disagree, I, I still want to be a part of the uh, environment. An environment where citizens are using their right to vote. Let's get out the vote, people! Let's get out! I'm really excited about the energy. People are engaged. They're not just sitting back hoping for something to happen. They're trying to make it happen. It is our responsibility to be, to be engaged in our citizen government. Indiana's own is telling you, get involved, stay involved, get engaged, make it happen. Now to a second controversy. This one is over the forced exit of the tenants of the Brick House, the university-owned property where the shooting took place. And some students are not taking the decision lightly. Children of undocumented immigrants, often called dreamers because of the act Congress passed to protect them. Many of them are now students in the United States, including some right here on campus. And I'm Carly Van Cleve from all of us at IU Newsnet, all including of us. <laughs> all of us here at IU Newsnet, including the many behind the scenes. Thanks for watching us this semester. We'll be back in the new year. From all of us here at IU Newsnet and the students of Stalker Elementary School, thanks for watching. Bye. Bye. Bye.